we are back on the Morning Brew with friends, and this is great. We got Jade Baugh from the Children's Grief Center, and you guys know each other. We do. Is yes. it through the through the business end of things, or? Well, the Children's Grief Center of New Mexico collaborates with many wonderful organizations in central New Mexico and around Albuquerque, all who work with vulnerable children. Mm -hmm. And Courtney's Roots of Empathy program comes out of Southwest Family Guidance Center, which is one of the great agencies that we're happy to, to partner with. Excellent. Excellent. So you guys have got to, got to work together before. Yes, we That's, have worked together we have, before. Um, actually, yeah. uh, the man who owns Southwest Family Guidance Center, Dr. Craig Pierce, he and I co-wrote a book together oh. a couple mm -hmm. years ago, and Courtney was a huge part of that project. Oh, really? What did you write about? Um, the book is called Parenting Through Grief, The mm -hmm. Attunction Approach, and it's about tuning in to the right thing in the right way at the right time, and specifically around the loss of a parent, which is uh, what we do every That's day. That's what the, the Children's, Children's Grief Center, Center. Yeah. yeah. So how, how do you guys find, how, do people come to you, do you reach out to people? How does it work at the Children's Grief Center? Actually, our number one source of referrals is school counselors, and mm. um, that's typically because they've seen a change in the child's behavior in the classroom, mm. and they start to dig a little deeper and realize that um, somebody in the family has died. Most families, and these are families just like yours, Dan, just mm -hmm. like mine, these are families from every zip code um, in our area, uh, come to us after the death of a father. Mm. And um, these dads are dying from cancer and car accidents, just atypical events, but they cause devastation within the family. Right. And there's no chapter in what to expect when you're expecting on how do you tell your kid that their father died today. Right. And that's why the Children's Grief Center is there. Wow, that's got to be a tough job. You know, everybody says, how do you do that? Right, I mean, so that's and, and really challenging. Or is it really one of those that when you help people get, a, get through a difficult phase, it, it makes their lives so much better and you're I so much am, more rewarded? I am constantly almost embarrassed by um, how rewarding this work is. I've been with the Grief Center for 12 years, and um, I get to see so many families um, just come in feeling uh, devastated, isolated, that no one understands where they're coming from, especially teenagers. They're mm. my favorite. Um, we work with young people ages 5 to 25, and then we also offer support groups for the caregivers bringing those kids. So we oh. have men's groups, we have uh, women's groups, but uh, last year we served 582 people That's huge. Um, within our area. And we never charge anybody for our services, and we don't receive any state or federal funding. So everything that we provide um, comes from within the community, and it's specialized peer support. And speaking of that, that's how the yes. that you're, you're here because of the food fight guys so going to be on later, right? The yes. chefs, yes. and you guys are the beneficiary we for are. the food fight, which yes. is coming up. The chefs are going to be on in a minute. We're going to talk all about that. But how often do you guys have these kinds of fundraisers, and how much money do you guys hope to raise in things like this? Well, this um, the food fight is the uh, brainchild of David Reese and Mike Panasco. Um, Mike works for the range and David has Soul and Vine restaurants, right. and they actually came up with this idea for chefs to have different opportunities to showcase their skills. Right, and, so I think uh, it's a knife challenge is I the know first that's one. part of it, I know knife that's part skills. of it. And they wanted to um, benefit an agency in the community, and they chose the Children's Grief Center, so um, we're honored to be a part of it, and um, all the funds raised will help provide kids with peer support um, it costs about $750 to provide a child with a whole year of services. So we're actually a super efficient organization, and that's because we have over 100 volunteers. Wow. And, you know, we're just excited that, that um, Food Fight thought of us. Yeah. Um, so you guys have to raise a lot of money if you at $700 a service, essentially. About 400000 a year. Wow, mm -hmm. that's huge. And it's all from community members? Yes, or foundations. Or foundations. But it's all private money. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, what are some of the other large things you guys do? Is, is it just only this kind of family services, or is that well, just a part of it? in addition to the regular support groups that we provide all year long um, for young people and their caregivers, we do a lot of education in the community. Mm -hmm. And then every summer, our big event is Camp Corazon. And well, I've heard of, I've seen this around, and people yeah. talked about it, but I don't remember if I know what it is or not. Well, camp is... Um, for those kids who live outside of our area and can't make it into regular support groups. I grew up in a really small town um, that had no sidewalks and no street lights. <laughs> and when my dad was killed in an accident at work when I was a teenager, it was really apparent that there was uh, just nobody really knew how to respond to our family. Um, for adults, people talk about 
You know, when someone dies, you're given three days off work and you come back to work and no one ever talks to you again. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it really becomes this sort of um, forbidden conversation topic. And so we do this camp so kids from these smaller communities have a place where they can realize they're not the only ones, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's that's just such a key thing to be to realize that this isn't just my it's family. Not just them. Yeah. And when they start to realize it's not just their family, they start to realize maybe it's not their fault. Mm -hmm. And that is actually one of the most common and most damaging beliefs that bereaved kids carry, that mm. it's their fault somehow that mm -hmm. their person died. Did something happen? Wow. Um, we, you guys, we're talking about the, the chefs just walked in here. This is going to be great. <laughs> yes, we'll talk about the food fight in just a second. We're back in a couple of seconds on Morning Brew with friends. And I love this. And you're going to stick around to maybe talk a little bit more about the food? You're going to have to get rid of me. Okay, <laughs> sounds like a plan. Yeah. We're back in a couple of seconds on Morning Brew with friends.